So an experience that I had that changed my attitude to my body and my gynae health was <laughs> in my first relationship, I'd been with this boy for about three years and all of a sudden I couldn't have sex with him. It was like not happening, doors closed, couldn't have sex. I had no idea why, I went to the doctor, there was nothing physically wrong with me and I just had no idea what was going on. So nine months later, we break up, me and this ex-boyfriend, and I find out that he's been cheating on me. And I manage eventually to get it out of him, all the truth and everything that had happened, and this is why we break up. And when I correlate the dates of when he started cheating on me, that is when my body stopped being able to have sex with him. And it was just this incredible moment of like, oh my god, my vagina was protecting me. My vagina wanted to save me from this destructive, toxic person and didn't want him in my life anymore. And I'm forever grateful to my vagina. For me, that taught me that, you know, in astounding ways that we don't even know about or understand yet, our gynae health is so connected to our mental health and our physical health, and it's really important to be in touch with all of that. I think it taught me about self-respect and about trusting myself more, because when I stopped being able to have sex with my partner, I realized how bad that made me feel about myself, and I felt like less of a woman, and I felt that my esteem went down and my worth went down because I wasn't able to have sex. Um, and I beat myself up about it, and ultimately that made things worse. And when we broke up and I realized like that was why it was happening, it was like, oh my god, there was nothing wrong with me. You know, my body was doing me a favor, and I think it taught me to just really be in tune with myself and not punish myself. And, you know, actually it was a real blessing that I couldn't have sex for all those months. So yeah, I think it taught me as well about kind of not just wrapping up my identity and my value as a woman and like how sexually available I am as well. So at the time, the way that I sort of dealt with it to keep my vagina self-esteem feeling good um, was I had a bit of a break from men for a while, to be honest. I felt that after that experience, I wanted to re sort of um, <laughs> colonize my own body and claim it back for my own and just be single for a while. And um, something that I have kept up and something I would recommend for your vagina self-esteem daily is obviously masturbation. Like, get to know yourself. Like, if you know yourself really well and you know how to please yourself and, you know, your vagina isn't something that scares you or something that, you know, you don't know much about, then it's, it's not going to be the best relationship and it's going to be difficult probably in your romantic relationships to feel good about it. And I think definitely when I was younger, that was a huge thing. Like I, when I was younger, oh my goodness, the idea of someone going down on you was like, no, please, because it's like very intimate, very embarrassing, someone being down there. And I think that masturbation is a really great way to just let go. Like you just stop caring about what it looks like and you just want it to feel good.